Hi, I'm Kelly. And I'm Pete. Together we're no gluten, no problem. Today we're going to show you how to make a Roman style thin crust pizza. When people think of pizza in Italy, they often think of Neapolitan pizza. But other regions of Italy have their own distinctive styles, including Rome. In fact, there you can find more than one style of pizza. And what we're showing you today is the ultra-thin crust style. It should be thin like a cracker, but not crunchy. And our version puffs with tons of little air pockets. And so with that said, facciamo una pizza. Let's make a pizza. So, to make the dough, first we're going to combine warm water, yeast, and sugar in a small bowl and let the yeast activate, and I've done that here in this bowl. Then we'll combine our dry ingredients. So we have brown rice flour, potato starch, these starches always stick in the bowl. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Corn starch. a little millet flour, and then a teaspoon each of psyllium husk powder, xanthan gum, and salt. So we'll whisk that together to combine. And now that that's combined, we'll add a tablespoon of olive oil to our wet ingredients. And we'll mix our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients. So this is the dough in um, our book that we actually roll out with a rolling pin. So as soon as I have this dough mixed up, I'm going to scrape it onto a dry piece of parchment paper and then roll it out with a rolling pin. Meanwhile, we do have our pizza steel in our oven on the middle rack, preheating to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. So the dough is all combined. I'm going to use a spatula to scrape it out onto the center of our parchment paper. I'll dust the top of the dough with brown rice flour. And using my hands, I will pat it into a rectangle to begin shaping the dough. Once it's pretty flattened into the shape, the beginnings of a rectangle, then I'll use our rolling pin here that I'll also dust with flour and roll out the dough. And this dough really benefits from rolling gently. You want to do a little bit at a time. If you try to press too hard, the dough will stick to your rolling pin and it will um, make it much more difficult to roll out. And if the dough does begin to stick at all, just add a little bit more flour. Now while Kelly's rolling out the pizza dough, what I've been doing over here on the stove top is sweating on prosciutto. The Roman style pizza that we're making today will top with the classic combination of prosciutto and arugula. If you're using imported Italian prosciutto, you can find either prosciutto di Parma or prosciutto di San Daniele. Nowadays you can also find pretty good domestic prosciutto as well. But what we're doing here is something pretty different than what you'll see at most pizzerias. Usually if you get prosciutto on a pizza, they add it after the pizza comes out of the oven and they use these big, beautiful, thin slices to top the pizza with. Instead, what we're doing is we're tearing it into pieces, we're sweating it on the stove top until it starts to brown and almost get a little crispy at the edges, and we're going to top the pizza with this prosciutto before it goes into the oven. And what ends up happening is it intensifies that flavor and the natural saltiness of the prosciutto uh, and finishes for us just right. So I've just finished rolling out the dough. It is pretty thin, about an eighth of an inch thick. I'll use the pizza wheel to trim the edges so we have a nice, um, even shape and then also no really small thin edges that will get too dark in the oven. And this dough benefits from working quickly. The sooner you get it in the oven, the more aggressive the bubbles are. So we want to um, trim this quickly and then we're going to brush it with olive oil. Okay, you got pizza peel ready? I'm ready, it's flour. I'm just waiting on you now. <laughs> I'm almost ready. I'm gonna take a bite of the prosciutto. Okay. 
You don't want the olive oil pooling anywhere on the dough because that will inhibit the bubbles, but you do want a nice even coat all the way to the edge. Would you say a thin sheen? A thin sheen, that's a good descriptor. There we go. Okay, so we'll launch this in the oven. This is gonna go in naked, no toppings, for the first two minutes. That will set the bubbles, and then we'll bring it out, we'll top and finish the pizza. Aha! Now when we say that this pizza blisters with air pockets, this is what we're talking about. Okay. So the first two minutes have passed, and the part baked on the pizza is finished. Pete's going to dust the peel with a little bit of bench flour and then slide the par-baked pizza back onto the peel. And this will be topped with pureed San Marzano tomatoes, a combination of shredded brick mozzarella and fresh mozzarella. And I'm gonna go thin on the San Marzano's because it's a, it's a lighter, thinner crust. I don't wanna overdo it and weigh it down with too much toppings. But I'm gonna go almost to the edge, not quite. We'll leave a little bit of exposed edge, but pretty thin. How's quality control? Good, good. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the right amount of sauce. More? No. No. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> All right, so first we'll go in with the, the shredded low moisture brick mozz. I think even that's pretty good. Doesn't that's need, funny. Doesn't need yep. too much. And then we'll come in with a little bit of the fresh mozzarella. And we just tear those into smaller pieces. And then once the cheese is on, we'll drizzle the pizza with a little olive oil that has some minced garlic and red pepper flakes in it. Or in my case, a lot of minced garlic and a red pepper minced. flakes. Once the garlic oil is drizzled on, then we'll add the prosciutto that Pete cooked a little bit ago. And this will go right back into the oven for about four to five minutes until it is brown and crispy on the edges. And these are those little shreds of brown prosciutto that I was talking about. By the time they come out of the oven, they'll be nice and crispy and perfectly salty. That looks good. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, into the oven. So the five minutes is up and Pete's taking the pizza out of the oven. To prevent the base of the crust from getting soggy while we finish topping it, I'm just going to remove it to a wire rack. So we'll finish the pizza with a little bit of baby arugula. That would take a lot. Well, I have to put it all on. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And this really does make a big difference. <laughs> and a sprinkle of kosher salt. Mm. Should we try it? Yes, definitely. All right, so for obvious reasons, I'll move it to a cutting board for us to slice it up. Looks good. Looks great. Slice for you. All right, thank you. And you'll see that it's really, it supports itself, but the dough has a lot of chew and texture to it. This little bubble's almost too pretty to bite. Mm. That's hot, but really delicious. Mm hmm That's fantastic. The right amount of crunch, the right amount of chew. I'm so flavorful. Beautiful pizza. Nice job. <laughs> and that's how you make a gluten-free Roman-style thin crust pizza. You can find this and other recipes in our cookbook, No Gluten, No Problem Pizza. And subscribe to No Gluten, No Problem for more videos on how to make great gluten-free pizza at home. We'll see you next time. A presto. Ciao.